Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph. So I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I am feeling burnout like nobody's business. And I'm feeling it in all aspects of my life, not just reading, not just content creation. So I wanted to spend this week being really kind to myself and trying to get my life together and get over my burnout. So welcome to my burnout diaries. I just haven't been wanting to read, I haven't been wanting to watch content, haven't been wanting to make content, haven't been wanting to be on camera, haven't been wanting to do anything but lay in bed or on the couch and just play my silly little games. I was hoping that April was going to be like this change because I do love the beginning of a new month and I especially love the beginning of a new month when it's spring but it's actually extremely gloomy today which is why the lighting is like this but I just am not feeling it. Like the first of April I was really invigorated and I was full of life and vigor <laughs> and now I'm just going downhill again. It's like I don't really want to get out of bed and I'm not trying to push myself too hard but I want to start maintaining some of the habits that I've been trying to create this year. Today I would like to food prep some things for breakfast specifically because I'm really bad at making breakfast and I have some just casual walks planned. Jared and I usually go on walks but I'm trying to get in the habit of just going on a walk when I feel like it. I just need to move my body more you know and that's something I'm trying Trying to work on and I've been getting better at it. I've been doing yoga. I'm not showing that on camera. Okay, I don't need you to see me struggling or breathing heavy, okay? But that's to say, this week especially, I'm just trying to be kind to myself. So one of the things that I really want to do is pick up a comfort series, and one of my all-time favorite comfort series is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. So I don't know if in this video I'm going to read all of it or even if I'm going to finish it, but I just need to pick up something that I'm excited about. I've been thinking about rereading it for the past like three weeks, but I normally read it in November for some reason. But this year, I think because of my burnout and my lack of excitement about things and books in general, I just want to be in a world that I'm excited about. So I'm going to start The Raven Boys today. The only other book that I do want to read in this vlog that I know for sure I will be reading is The Familiar. And this is because it comes out on Tuesday. I'm buddy reading it with Jared and I'm buddy reading it with some of my patrons. So I know that I will be picking that up in this video. But what else I pick up book wise, it's all just going to be mood reading and like reading what I'm excited about. Also, it is raining this weekend and it's supposed to rain next weekend when I'll like be ending this vlog. But the rest of the week is between the 70s and 80s. So I am very excited. I'm very, very excited. I don't love when it's super, super hot and gross, but I do love a nice breezy spring day, you know, blowy and flowy. <laughs> solar eclipse and I, my library didn't have any of the glasses and so I'm like how can I see the solar eclipse I can't so I'm just gonna be viewing it from my desk at work <laughs> but I wanted to update because I'm actually in the middle of reading two books right now as I said in the beginning of this I really wanted to reread a comfort series so I started the Raven Boys and I'm just so happy to be back in this world I've been thinking about it non-stop for like three weeks so I'm glad that I finally just picked it up and I am raw dog in this one I'm reading it physically simply because I the last three times that I've read it have listened to the audiobook and like listen the audiobook sucks but I know because the, why does this 50 year old man voice these characters like this who, that are in high school? I don't understand it, but that is what we have. That is what we were given. Honestly, over time, I haven't minded the audiobook as much just because I've listened to it so many times now, but it's just, it's not good. Okay, it's just me getting past how bad it is. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna physically read it this time because there's something about reading on your Kindle physically that like, I'm sure there's some science behind it, but I just fly through it. I just fly through the pages. As a matter of fact, this series in general, one time, this is my 
my claim to fame within my own household, meaning Jared and my cats. I read this entire four book series in three days. It was definitely during the pandemic and I just went from one book to the next book to the next book. So yeah, it's easy to get through this series and reading it. I just started it last night before bed and I'm already 80 pages in. I love it. My comfort characters, my comfort series, my comfort town. It's a small town. If you have been around my channel for a while, you will know that some of my favorite tropes are like small towns. I love witchy vibes. I love like small town romances as well. But there's just something about like a high school setting where it's like haunted, the town is haunted in some sort of way. And I think that the Raven Boys is kind of what unlocked that. But also like shows that I watch because I feel like despite Pretty Little Liars not being like haunted. There is like that small town spooky quality to it. And it's just the small group of friends. And then Vampire Diaries. This doesn't really count in terms of what I'm saying about the spooky teenage thing, but Gilmore Girls, the small town vibe where everyone knows each other type of thing. I don't know why I love that. I don't know if I would ever want to live in that. Although I did in high school, I did. And I loved it. Some of the best years of my life, not high school, but that town. Absolutely hated high school. I don't think I talked to anyone from high school except my like childhood best friend. All that's to say is this is just bringing me so much comfort. So this takes place in a small town called Henrietta, Virginia. And this follows a group of characters. I would say the major focus, especially in this book when you're being introduced to this world and these characters and everything that's happening is on Gansey and Blue. And Gansey and Blue are kind of destined to come together at some point because there's a curse in Blue's family where the man that she falls in love with, if she kisses them, they will die. So I wanted to kind of read you the first part of the prologue. Blue Sargent had forgotten how many times she'd been told that she would kill her true love. Her family traded in predictions. These predictions tended, however, to run towards the non-specific. Things like something terrible will happen to you today. It might involve the number six or money is coming. Open your hands for it. Or you have a big decision and it will not make itself. The people who came to the little bright blue house of 300 Fox Way didn't mind the imprecise nature of their fortunes. It became a game, a challenge, to realize the exact moment that the predictions came true. When a van carrying six people wheeled into a client's car two hours after his psychic reading, he could nod with a sense of accomplishment and release. When a neighbor offered to buy another client's old lawnmower if she was looking for a bit of extra cash, she could recall the promise of money coming and sell it with the sense that the transaction had been foretold. Or when a third client heard his wife say, this is a decision that has to be made. He could remember the same words being said by Mara Sargent over a spread of tarot cards and then leap decisively to action. But the belief changed when her mother's half-sister Neve came to their little town of Henrietta. Neve had gotten famous for doing loudly what Blue's mother did quietly. Mara's readings were done in her front room, mostly for residents of Henrietta and the valley around it. Neve, on the other hand, did her readings on television at five o'clock in the morning. Morning. She had a website featuring old soft focused photographs of her staring unerringly at the viewer. Neve finally appeared on a spring evening when the already long shadows of the mountain to the west seemed ever longer than usual. When Blue opened the door for her, she thought for a moment that Neve was an unfamiliar old woman, but then her eyes grew used to the stretched crimson light coming through the trees and she saw that Neve was barely older than her mother which is not very old at all. You're Mara's daughter, Neve said. And before Blue could answer, she added, this year you will fall in love. There's just something about it. There's just something about the writing. So yes, in the prologue, you get set up with the fact that Blue is gonna fall in love, but she knows that falling in love means her one true love will die. So she's kind of trying to avoid it, but the universe has other plans and it draws Gansey and Blue together. Along with drawing Gansey and Blue together, there is a cast of other characters like Adam and Ronan and Noah. And there are other characters that you meet along the way, but these are the core characters and they become this really tight knit friend group throughout the series. And you get to see some supernatural things happen. Obviously Blue's family is psychic and she technically doesn't have this power. She is sort of an amplifier. So she has lived a life of what she feels like is on the outside of what her family's capabilities are. And that's an interesting dynamic in and of itself. But Blue and her mother Mara have a really beautiful relationship. And I have to say that the one thing that keeps drawing me back to the series time and time again is the found family in here, but also the blood 
relatives as well because Mara and Blue have such a beautiful relationship, but Mara has her own found family that has kind of raised Blue, as well as Blue is on this journey of basically finding her own found family. And I know that this series, this book is very polarizing for people simply because of the writing style, but also because you will be chasing the plot around and around and around if that is what you're focusing on and if you are a plot driven reader, because this is very much about vibes and about the characters and about this found family. And there are definitely some very ridiculous villains in here, but it's almost fun and comical and works in this book. And I think that just lends to the writing style and this world that has been created in general. But I don't know, there's just something about it that I can't even explain. There's just a magic about this series that keeps drawing me back and I love it. And I think why I wanted to pick this series up this week in particular is just because I've been struggling so much with burnout and I haven't found a lot of excitement in picking things up, which I, you know, talked about in the beginning of this video. I've just really been struggling with burnout and it's in all facets of my life. It's not even just making content because making content is probably the most consistent thing that I enjoy doing and brings me a lot of joy. But admittedly in the last two years, I've been feeling a lot of burnout with the reading process, but I always know that when I come back to the series, it really revives my love of reading. So that being said, I'm reading this and I hope to read the entirety of the series this week. If not over the course of this month, I'm not trying to force it. But I also started a buddy read with one of my patrons, Rin. We are reading Role Playing and this is a really sweet romance. It's a contemporary romance about these two older main characters. One is 48 and one is like 52. They both love video games. They have many online friends, but many of their real life acquaintances and family and friends sort of complain that they live their lives in a way that's not like normal. And so they're trying to get them out there dating and like having a social life because they feel like having an online social life is not the same. And instead of using that energy to argue back about how it is the same and how internet friends are real friends, okay? They just decide to start being a little bit more social to try to please those around them. I really, really like it. I feel like so many of the things in here are extremely relatable, but I think the thing I love the most is that these are older characters and there is such a heavy discussion about like growing out of things and what's acceptable for specific age ranges. And I feel this pressure all the time as I've been getting older, like certain things aren't for me because I'm this age or that age, or I should be this mature. And it's like, my brain is not gonna mature past the age of like 22. Let's just be real. Let's just be real. And I love that they play video games. They're good at video games. They have internet friends and it's like, not this weird thing. It doesn't read as like weird to me and maybe it's just because I'm in it, but I love it. I love the discussion of it. I'm really, really enjoying this. I was a little thrown off by the writing at first, but I think it's the narration to be honest, not so much the writing, but I listened to like 20% of it last night and I'm just really loving it. I like both of these characters a lot. I see pieces of myself in both of them, but especially Aiden at this point. <laughs> and I really like their chemistry. I like the way that they interact with each other. And I love when they talk about video games and stuff like that because it's just really sweet and cute. I don't know, the vibes of this one are really great. So I'm glad that I picked it up. So I'll probably be listening to that on my downtime, hopefully finish it today and continue reading The Raven Boys. Hello, happy Tuesday friends. I ended up finishing role playing last night and I'm so glad that I picked this one up. I've really been in a contemporary romance mood for whatever reason, like sometimes it hits me where all I wanna do is read like contemporary romances or more like contemporary thrillery type books. And that doesn't hit very often, but it's happening right now. I think it's because this year I've primarily read fantasy. I mean, obviously that's my favorite genre, but sometimes, you know, you can get burnt out even on your favorite genre. So I'm in the headspace of reading like other things. So I've been reading a lot of contemporary romance. I've been wanting to read a horror, a thriller, like some more YA contemporary, which is a big reason why I picked up The Raven Boy 
boys because despite that being often categorized as fantasy, I don't really look at it as fantasy. And honestly, my reread of it has been so great. Like I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about the Raven Boys as well, only because I already love it. Like my opinions are not really gonna change. Like the only thing that changes for me is the order in which I love the books. But the moment I start the books, it feels like coming home. It just feels so nice to be back. Like I love the small town of Henrietta. I love all of the characters. I love 300 Fox Way. Blue and her family is just everything to me. I love the women in this book. So yeah, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I'm loving my reread. I've been reading it before bed and it's just such a cozy vibe. That being said, I finished role playing and I was reading this pretty much all day yesterday and I finished it right before I got home from work and I really, really enjoyed this. I think I misspoke earlier and said that this has fake dating in it because I thought that it was gonna end up in a fake dating scenario. Our main character Aiden needs a date to his brother's wedding and so I thought it was gonna turn into fake dating, but actually doesn't really. They don't fake date. They become friends to lovers and not friends in the sense that they've known each other for a long time. They just build up this really nice friendship and it's pretty slow burn and they kind of suddenly realize that they're in love with each other. But the thing for me about this story that was just like, wow, I'm so glad that I picked this up is the fact that these characters, which I think I said before, they're in their 40s and 50s. So Maggie is 48 and Aiden is like 50 to 53 and they love video games. That's actually how they meet because they are are playing in a guild together and Maggie just kind of assumes that he's like 18, 19, 20 but they finally meet and the meet was hilarious and they realize obviously that they're both older and they strike up an actual true friendship and in this friendship you realize that Aiden has never had the opportunity to really understand or learn about his sexuality or why he feels the way that he feels. Mainly this is due to like obviously toxic masculinity based on how he has grown up but also in the small town where most of everyone that he is surrounded by is straight and cis, like they're not talking about sexuality. So he's just kind of believed for a very long time that a lot of the ways that he feels he's just broken and it was really heartbreaking to hear that conversation but also it was really heartwarming that in this conversation Aiden comes to a realization about himself and he literally thanks Maggie and says you've changed my life because for so long he thought he was broken and like I really cried during that part because it just goes to show that like it doesn't matter what age you are like exploring your sexuality doesn't have to be a thing that happens when you're younger it can be something that absolutely happens when you're older and I just really love having older protagonist. I've kind of screamed about this before that I wish we had more books with older protagonists going through big life changes and transitions and I think this book was really like breaking the mold of these stereotypes that we have for older people and older couples and like what falling in love looks like in your 40s and 50s and like what discovering your sexuality is like. I feel like we put so many age limits on things. It's just really comforting to see characters that are older than me going through life transitions that feel familiar and real. I think it just made me feel better about the fact that like I am technically an adult. I'm the adult in the situation and I don't feel like an adult. But what does an adult feel like? <laughs> So yeah, I really ended up loving this. I gave it four stars. It didn't quite have that five star feeling, but I'm gonna be honest, like most contemporary romances don't often get a five star from me. So this isn't like surprising. I think this will be among one of my favorite contemporary romances that I've read, especially because I haven't read too many contemporary romances that have older protagonists like this falling in love. So I highly recommend checking this out. I know people like spicier stuff. This is definitely on the less spicy side, but I still, I still really loved it. And I really loved the conversations in here. And it was just really fun. Like the video game aspect was really fun. It's not like the most prevalent part of this book, but it is an interesting aspect. And like the conversations of being a certain age and people expecting things of you, especially your family. And when you don't follow those expectations, the amount of like judgment that you get. But I also did want to say that for anybody going into this, there is quite a bit of homophobia in here and like an outing, somebody gets outed in this book. So be mindful of that going into it. I know that can be a really triggering topic. So I would just be really mindful of that because I wasn't fully expecting it. But yeah, so far I'm having a great time with my reads, but it's been a pretty decent week. I, I feel like I've been setting myself up for like success. I've gone on a few hawker walks. I've meal prepped a little bit, which I personally, I hate meal prepping. So it was nice to meal prep some breakfast items because I'm really bad with breakfast. I, I hate it. It's my least favorite meal of the day. So I'm feeling pretty okay. I'm just still extremely tired, but all that 
being said, I did go to the bookstore a little bit earlier today because Jared has some unexpected time off and we decided to go to the bookstore. And we got the familiar. The real reason I'm showing this one is because I'm about to start it. Jared has already started and him and I are buddy reading it, but also some of my patrons are buddy reading it with me as well. So I'm gonna be working on this one. And then this weekend is a readathon, which I think I'm just gonna vlog through it. Um, I have a readathon on my Patreon. It's like an Animal Crossing readathon that we're doing and I'm really excited for it. But I don't know what my TBR is gonna be for that. I didn't really wanna know until Friday. So there's a likelihood that I'll probably be still reading this for the readathon, but I might pick up that new Elsa silver book um i have a few other things that i really want to get to so we will see i'm just kind of going with the flow way with the compass and a map i made looking for my shadow in the dark what happens if i look for you with the compass and my tennis shoes and find you holding someone else's heart Sleeping on your bedroom floor I let my feelings wash ashore You told me I'm projecting And I don't move with much direction Anymore I don't know what I'm looking for I can't believe I care Soon I want a pinky swear I'm leaving, I'll call you when I'm there What happens if I lose my way With a compass and a map I made Looking for my shadow in the dark What happens if I look for you With a compass and my tennis shoes And find you How's everyone doing? Um, it's it's very fucking hot right now. <laughs> I'm so hot, but I'm updating right now, not because I've read anything, not because of any other reason than I just quit my job. <laughs> so I just handed in my two weeks notice, and I'm getting a new job. I got a new job. I I've known about it for like a month now but I just haven't really said anything because I didn't have a start date. I hadn't even really quit my job yet and I quit today and I'm feeling very overwhelmed, but also very relieved because there was just like a lot of stuff going on at my job that wasn't serving me, I guess, and I needed to move on, which has been really sad and very overwhelming, but this has been kind of a thing going on since August. So I'm finally moving on and it's really scary and I'm very scared. Um, and I have a big fat headache because <laughs> I've just been so overwhelmed today. So anyway, I wanted to update you as it happened. Hello, it is Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or is it Thursday? What's today? What is the date? I think it's Thursday. I'm very thrown off this week for a lot of reasons. Yard work just started, but I don't think it's close enough for you to hear, but I apologize if you can hear it in the background. Also, the weather is super nice today. Drinking my black iced tea with peach juice. This is my favorite combination of like spring and summer drink. Actually, I drink it all year long. I don't know what I'm saying, but it is one of my favorite things to drink in the spring and the summer. So try it out. 
I'm not gonna lie to you. You probably saw the clip yesterday when I was talking about my job. I've just been in a really weird place, like a headspace, especially last month. Last month was like a really hard month for me just generally. So like I said in the beginning of this vlog, my reading has been like really all over the place. I kind of been slowly reading things, which is perfectly fine. I'm happy to like slowly get through books, but I'm just in like the weirdest headspace because I want something very specific. And maybe y'all can help me out with this. I want something very specific, but I can't figure out what it is. I want something like Sadie, but I've read Sadie, loved Sadie, but I also want something like Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Also read that, loved that. But I also want something that's like The Raven Boys, which obviously I'm rereading it. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Like I want something that's like eerie, kind of YA. I've very much been in like a YA thriller horror mood. I did grab I'm the Girl by Courtney Summers. This is the novel that came out right after the project. And the thing is, I was really weary about this because I didn't love the project like at all. <laughs> but this one sounds more similar to what was happening with Sadie minus the podcast element. So it's like when 16 year old Georgia Avis discovers the dead body of a 13 year old Ashley James, she teams up with Ashley's older sister Nora to find and bring the killer to justice before he strikes again, which is so similar to kind of what was happening in Sadie, but different at the same time. So I was thinking about this one. I also have Kristen Sutherland, is that her name? Her other book, which was called Evocations. That one is supposed to be more on the horror side. I know Horrid kind of falls in line with this. I've been rewatching a lot of Kayla's videos because I've been watching a lot of like my comfort YouTubers to make myself feel better. And I was watching one of her videos and she actually was talking about Horrid and the way she was describing it, I was like, oh yeah, I was interested in this book and I just never read it for whatever reason. And this is like a ghosty book and I'm kind of looking for that. But a book just came out that I took a picture of when I was at Barnes & Noble because they didn't have a copy of it. And it's their YA book club pick. I also don't know if I would buy it just because I don't, YA and I haven't been like besties. I'm trying to fall back in love with it. It's called Your Blood, My Bones by Kelly Andrews, who also wrote The Whispering Dark. The synopsis alone gave me what I wanted. This is what I'm thinking. These are the vibes I'm looking for, but I just don't know. Does anyone know my taste enough to tell me if I will like these books? Will I like them? Or do you have a suggestion of one that you think that I'll like? So yeah, I'm in like a very hyper specific mood, but can't pinpoint what that book would be for me. That all being said, I have started The Familiar. I'm like three chapters in. I feel like Libra Dugo always gets better with every book that she writes, but the thing is I haven't liked the last three books of hers. Three? Four? I don't know. It's been a few and it's been really disappointing and so this is kind of my last chance with her. That being said, I'm enjoying the writing. I think the writing is very good. I'm just not fully in the mood for this specifically because it's a historical fiction. So I'm slowly reading it this one because I am buddy reading it. So I wanna slowly read it and not force myself through it. So in the meantime, I decided to pick up Funny Story by Emily Henry because I have an ALC of it and romance has just been like very easy for me to consume and it's something I've been enjoying. So yeah, I picked up Funny Story. I'm enjoying it. I was just cracking up because one of the main characters, well, the main character, Daphne, she is a children's librarian in Michigan and the <laughs> Emily Henry is writing like all librarians only have two pennies to rub together and can't even afford a plane ticket to a bachelorette party. And I'm like, Emily. <laughs> but I do kind of like the premise of this one. Like it's, it seems like it's gonna be a silly goofy time, but also have that traditional Emily Henry thing where she has like a heavy aspect to it. And we're kind of already seeing that. So basically Daphne was in this relationship with another man. They were engaged. They were like months away from their wedding. He has this best friend who happens to be a woman. And at his bachelor party, which she was invited to, she decided to confess all of her feelings for him. And he confessed all of her feelings for her. And they ended up cheating on their significant others and deciding to be together. So when he gets home from the bachelor party, he tells Daphne like, we're not gonna be together there. He kicks her out of the house. And Daphne goes to Miles' apartment, who is the other significant other that just got dumped, and says, can I move in with you so that we can kind of commiserate together? And so they are living together. They've been living together for a while now. And she has like a countdown. I think it's a hundred and something days before she can move out. And then one morning they wake up to wedding invitations to their respective exes 
wedding. And they're like, what the fuck? So they both get drunk and they RSVP when they're drunk and decide to say that they're fake dating. And we all know how that goes. We all know where this is leading to. I think the fun part of this for me so far is that our main character, Daphne, she actually doesn't have any friendships outside of her exes, Peter's friends. So because they broke up, she's kind of starting over. She's starting her life over in a way where she's trying to make friends. And so she asks one of her coworkers named Ashley to go out to this wine bar. And Ashley is just a very funny character so far. And I really enjoy her as a character. And I just do enjoy the fact that Daphne is probably going to be making quite a few friends throughout this And that's just like a really nice thing to see as friendships forming on page because I I guess I don't read that that often specifically in contemporary romance because obviously in contemporary romance the focus is the relationship and the main couple getting together I always wish in Emily Henry books though that we had dual POV I just feel like it would be so much more fun. I'm headed to work So I'll probably listen to a good portion of it at work because I don't really have much to do anymore. <laughs> It's the start of the Animal Crossing readathon on my Patreon. I'm wearing my Leaf sweater because Leaf is one of my favorite non-playable characters, I guess. But as you know, I'm still kind of trying to get through my burnout phase, trying to get through this period of my life. But I did end up finishing Funny Story by Emily Henry. I would say that I am waffling between a 3.5 and a four stars, which is funny because that's how I felt about Happy Place as well. I think the only solid four star I've given Emily Henry is people we meet on vacation, which was totally unexpected. I think I just felt so distant from the characters in so many ways, but I really liked them as characters. It was this really weird feeling where I felt like I wanted to be so attached to them and I really wanted to be so invested in everything that was going on. And it really wasn't until the last like 10% that I even felt a lot of emotions about what was happening in this book. So I think I kind of mentioned that both of the characters, my Miles and Daphne go through these really rough breakups and they happen to be thrown together. They decide to fake date and as you can expect, they fall in love. But with Emily Henry, it's not that cut and dry. There's always a rough road of someone coming to terms with things in their life. And so in here, Daphne is really trying to come to terms with the fact that she doesn't have any real friendships outside of her ex. And she also doesn't let people in because of her relationship with her dad. And that the only person she has ever had had a very close relationship with who is like her everything is her mom and she's realizing that like one person in your life cannot be everything for you because it's not healthy and it's unrealistic. So she's going through this breakup, she's going through issues with her and her dad's relationship and she's also trying to realize how to be her own person outside of a relationship. The trying to be your own person outside of a relationship instead of being a we being a me type of thing. Like I did relate to that to some degree and like I don't have to relate to a book to feel something about it. I think it's just that part especially felt a little bit flat for me for reasons that I don't really want to talk about because of how this story unfolds, but it just felt a little bit flat for me only because I feel like we didn't spend enough time exploring that. And I think in the timeline, I wasn't expecting Daphne to make like all of these new friends. I was just hoping to see more growth in her like putting herself out there. And you do see that, but not to the extent that I was like, I guess expecting based on what we were focusing on. So I just, I felt a little bit distant from things. Um, I did think it was cool that she worked in a library because there were a lot of things that I felt Emily got right with this character in terms of working in a public library. There are other things that, I don't know, you have creative liberty, I guess. But I did enjoy that as a backdrop because it did feel relatable to me 
in a way that I haven't really felt in many books because I haven't read that many books about a librarian in general, I guess, especially a children's librarian, which is what I do. So I think that that was very interesting and like it was fun to read about. And I loved the little tidbits of patrons just being patrons. <laughs> in terms of Miles, really enjoy Miles. Again, one of those characters that like, I really, really like him and he does all the right things and he says all the right things. And like archetype wise, he is the character that I would love. But once again, I felt very distant from these characters for some reason, despite liking them and liking them together. I just felt really distant. But I will say Emily Henry has a knack for sucking me into a book because I read this in like a day, I would say like collectively a day. She just has a way of sucking me into books and like wanting to see how it ends. I did feel a lull a little bit in the middle of this book, but nonetheless, I read it in collectively a day. So yeah, I guess that didn't mean anything. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just very conflicted about this one. I've been thinking about it all day, actually. I wanted to update earlier this morning and now it's like 4 p.m. And I'm like, I have no idea how I feel about this book other than just distant from everything. Everything just feels at arm's length is the only way I can explain it. But I can definitely see this one being people's new favorite book, especially for the people who love a book boyfriend. I think Miles is going to be a favorite. But I also think that just the aspect of like getting yourself lost in a relationship and losing your identity and like your friendships are all based in this relationship that you have. I can see people really relating to that. And this book maybe hitting them hard. And I'm not gonna lie, like there was some stuff with her dad that really hit me hard. Um, and I did cry a bit, you know, teared up. I squeezed a little tear out, but again, it's like, I still felt so distant from it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this one, but that's how I'm feeling. Very ambivalent about it, I guess is the word. So after finishing that, I've decided that I'm going to focus on The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I'm maybe 20 pages into this, I'm really not far. I wasn't like fully in the mood for it when I started it, so I didn't get far, but I have read a bit more today. I think I'm now on page 60 or something like that, so not that much more progress, but I was listening to it while I was cleaning and starting laundry, and I'm more in the mood for it. So I think I'm gonna focus on The Familiar for the rest of the weekend, and that'll probably be the last book that I read in this vlog, unless I get the itch to pick something else up, but no, I just, I need to finish The Familiar. I'll try it all day Tell your eyebrows point to your jawbone just the right way if you made a mistake you can come back for a replay i've been thinking about you these days but you'll crash your car if you change your Which is my bed, that spot right there, just there. 
So you may or may not know that this week is circle week, which now it has passed, but it was circle week. And in circle week, they were having a book deal, which was buy two, get one free. And I wasn't going to participate. And then I needed to go to Target anyway for a couple other things, which I can't really believe myself. I ended up going to Target to get the couple of other things plus the books. And that's all I left with. But anyway, I wanted to show you some of the books that I got. I also ended up getting, oh, I actually have other books to show you. Hold on. I need to get up and grab those. So as we established, I quit my job, but I got another job. So as like a congratulations, but so sad you're leaving your job type of thing. Um, I got myself some books, but also Jared got me some books because he's one of the sweetest people that I have ever met or had the privilege of loving. So starting with one of the things that I needed to go to Target for, I needed to get a new work journal. So I ended up getting this, which is so pretty. It's embroidered. And I really like that it's lined. I normally get dotted. And I do love dotted journals for bullet journaling, but not so much for work and taking notes and stuff. So yeah, I ended up getting that. That was one of the things that I really wanted to get before starting the job, which I actually don't start for another like week, but it was circle week, so I went. And then I perused the books. There were two books where I was like, okay, I really, really want these. I'm excited about reading them. And the first one was Wandering Star by Tommy Orange. So Tommy Orange wrote There There. I read There There like two years ago. I loved it, it was one of my favorite books of that year and this is a follow-up to there there so I am very excited about reading this I really really like Tommy Orange's writing so when I saw this one I was like okay that solidified that I need to pick other books. So the other one that I ended up getting is The Reappearance of Rachel Price. And I was on the fence about this one only because I don't often buy thrillers of any sort because I never know if I'm going to reread them. But I really like Holly Jackson and I to this day still think about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I have contemplated rereading it. And this one actually fits that whole vibe, that whole mood I was in the other day, which I'm still very much in, where I wanted something kind of like Sadie and I wanted something like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I totally forgot that Holly Jackson was coming out with a new book because I won't lie to you, I don't keep up with a lot of YA releases these days. It is literally about a documentary that's happening about the disappearance of a teenager named Rachel Price who then suddenly reappears and acts as if nothing happened. And I'm like, okay, you sold me. The last one, I had a little bit of a hard time choosing, but I ended up going with Belladonna. And this is also because of that mood that I'm in. I feel like this really fits that mood where I'm in like a witchy, weird girl vibe. I'm just a little bit nervous. And I think this is what's taken me so long to even buy this series because I did like Adeline Grace's other series but I read it as it was coming out so I can't say how I would feel about it now as my reading has changed but I remember really getting absorbed into that story it's called All the Stars and Teeth or something like that anyway I've heard really good things about this I just haven't heard the best things about the sequel so I'm a bit nervous but nonetheless I have it so I'm gonna read it and then from Barnes and Noble I ended up getting personally for myself I ended up getting Wild Love by Elsie Silver because I love the Chestnut Springs series. I'm a little bit nervous about this. I'm not gonna lie, only because literally today I heard someone saying that this wasn't as good as Chestnut Springs. But I'm just gonna find out for myself because romance is one of those things where I feel like I haven't found someone who has the exact contemporary romance taste is me. Like there are some people who it comes close, but it's not exact. And I really think that's just because romance is one of those things where tropes either make it or break it for you. And I love a single dad romance. I've learned that about myself. I really have. And I've learned that I like kids in romance stories, which is something I never really thought because I don't want kids, but like I like them in stories for whatever reason, if they're written well. And then the books that Jared got for me, he got me another romance, Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I am very, very excited about this one. I have heard it's heavier. So I have been kind of avoiding this right now, but I am really looking forward to like whenever I get to it. And then another book that actually I talked about earlier in this vlog, because I had said that I saw a book at Barnes and Noble, which was the YA book club pick. And the synopsis 
gave me everything that I feel like I'm in the mood for, that very specific mood I'm in. So Jared got me Your Blood, My Bones, and the synopsis is really, it was really captivating. It's just really long, so I don't wanna read it to you. But the main thing it says is, a girl who will not love, a boy who cannot die, a twisted destiny neither can escape. And so apparently the guy in this book, he, continues to die and then come back and he relives his death over and over and over again so i'm really looking forward to this i think people liked the whispering dark that is their other novel and i think jan read the whispering dark for the full moon book club so hopefully she liked it but anyway i'm really here to update you because i've been reading the familiar and i am 68 percent into it and i'm really enjoying it I don't know how to even talk about this book because there is so much to this book that I want to talk about, but I feel like it's best left unknown. I feel like the plot has only just started to make sense and get started for me, but it might just be me. I don't know. I am enjoying it though. It's actually feeling like a four stars, which is nice because I do not like the Ninth House duology or <laughs> duology. It's a trilogy, Stephanie. So it's been a nice surprise. And I think that with every Leigh Bardugo book, like her writing continues to get better and better and better with every single book. Plot wise, she does something different in most of these new books that are outside of the Grishaverse. So it's it's been really fun to see her doing other things. So this mainly follows our main character, Lucia, and Lucia has magical abilities of sorts. She doesn't understand why it works and the full mechanics of how it works, but she understands that it works and that it requires usually singing. And Lucia is working as a housemaid in a fairly affluent house, but you can tell that they're struggling. And so one day she accidentally burns a loaf of bread and she fixes it with her magic. And Valentina, who runs the house, who is the wife of the house, she ends up seeing this happen and she wants to out Lucia for this magic. When that happens, she starts to show Lucia off to all of the wealthy families. And now Valentina's once struggling family is starting to gain recognition and a little bit more praise. Well, Lucia decides that she wants to take this opportunity to try to get out of the situation that she's in, gain some money, her own recognition, and not have to work for anyone ever again. She ends up gaining the notice of Antonio Perez. And Antonio Perez is the disgraced secretary of the king. And the king of Spain is is very much at war with the Queen of England. And so Antonio Perez will do anything to get back in the good graces of the king. So Lucia's moment of trying to garner just a little bit more in life turns into this really wild ride where she is kind of used as a pawn to help Antonio get back his spot in the king's court. It's such an interesting story because you also meet this other character. You meet this other character named Santan Hill and he is Antonio Perez's like right hand man, I guess you could say. And you quickly realize that he has something going on with him. But Lucia kind of becomes his champion. So he's the one who's like training her and trying to help her understand her magic while also trying to understand her magic as well well and how they can use it for Antonio's purposes. And it's just very interesting and messy and these characters are very messy. And there's a lot of discussions about religion and heresy and like magic and what magic is linked to. This book is making me want to research so much about the Spanish Inquisition because I don't know more than like the basics about it. But this is making me wonder like, what this story is fully based on, like what her full inspiration was. And I would love to know if in the book, because Jared's reading the physical book and I was just reading the audiobook, I would love to know if in the book she has like a discussion or an author's note that's talking about the inspiration. So I think when I finish it, I'll probably go read that. I feel like this is just such an interesting story coming from Lee Bardugo. It's not necessarily unexpected. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm having a good time. And I don't necessarily feel like it's a five star right now, but I'm definitely feeling feeling those four star vibes. I will think about this book probably quite a lot. I'm excited to finish it. I will definitely be finishing it tomorrow. Good morning. I finished The Familiar yesterday afternoon. And then last night I finished my reread of The Raven Boys. So we are thriving actually. I'm definitely feeling much better than I was before. And I think I'm finally in a place where 
the reality of like moving on is hitting me and that's sad but it's also like a really good thing for me i think so i can't say that this week was successful because i pretty much liked everything that i read the familiar was a four stars i ended up finishing it and immediately knew this is a four star read and that's great because i haven't given at least Bardugo four stars in a while i think in three books i haven't given her four stars and it's been really sad for me because there's something about Lee Bardugo that I just absolutely love. Like I have seen her on three different live panels where I've gone. Like I saw her at Comic-Con. I've seen her twice at LA Festival of Books. Was it both at LA Festival of Books? I don't know. I've seen her three different times and every single time I'm like, man, I love this woman. She is so inspirational and I love the way she talks about becoming a writer. I love the way she talks about her process, which is hilarious to me because I don't want to be a writer. Like I have no desire to write at all. I lost that desire in college. All that's to say, I'm really glad that I loved The Familiar because I don't want to say this was my last chance with Lee Bardugo, but it kind of was. Like in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, if I don't like this, I need to stop reading her stuff until like maybe she goes back to the Grishaverse. But now I feel okay to read another new release that isn't in the Hellbent world. <laughs> I think the last 30% were my favorite parts of this book. It's where the plot gets the most intense, the most interesting. I think everything starts to come together and make sense. And I really loved the pacing in the last 30%. I would say the first 70%, I was very intrigued and I was interested in the magic and I was interested in these characters and like where this was gonna go. But it still sometimes felt like even at the 60% mark that we were just getting started with the plot. So I ended up really liking the ending. It went in an unexpected direction for me, but I guess in my mind, I thought this was gonna take a different type of turn, which I'm not gonna even go into because it's technically spoilery for other books that Lee Bardugo has written. So yeah, it took a different turn than I expected, but ultimately I really liked it. I really liked the character arcs and I really liked the discussions in here about women and women's autonomy. But there's also a lot of discussions about religion and heresy and about witchcraft. And this is all tied to the magic system, at least for our main character, being linked to being Jewish. And so most of this book, she's extremely terrified that her magic, like the way that she has to access her magic, which so far as she knew was through song, would out her as being Jewish. And she had already lost her mom and her father went mad with the loss of her mom. And so she is extremely terrified that someone is gonna find out her lineage. And this actually gets explored a lot. And I was very, very interested in those aspects of the book. I was very interested in the discussion of religion and the way that religion is used to justify so many things throughout history. But also this book really dives into the strive, the need, the desire for power and like what people will do to get it. Even our main character, she wants more in life, which leads her to want more power, which leads her to this really ultimately shitty situation. And so the discussion of power and power dynamics and who wants power and who has access to power. So I loved a lot of the discussions in here and I would love to reread this, I think. This is a book that I feel I would love to read physically and just annotate and like sit with what's being said. So yeah, ultimately this is a four star read. I'm so excited about it. I'm excited to see what Lee Bardugo does next. Who knows? I mean, I know the third in the Hellbent series will come out, but outside of that, what is she gonna do? And yeah, like I said, I finished The Raven Boys. Again, five out of five stars. I just love it. It made me feel so good and it was so nice to be back. I think I'm gonna continue my slow reread of the entirety of the series. I haven't read them physically very often and halfway through, I was kicking myself because I was like, why didn't I just choose to annotate these? I've never annotated them. So I might start from here on out, like Dream Thieves on to annotate, but I don't know because I didn't annotate Raven Boys but that's just another excuse to reread it. Anyway, thank you so much for spending this week with me. I hope that if you're experiencing burnout or some sort of rut, you are being kind to yourself and you are taking the time to do things that bring you happiness and like bring you back to center. And go reread that favorite series, besties. Go do it, okay? If you've made it this far and you have nothing else to say, feel free to leave a bird emoji down below for the Raven Boys. And I will talk to y'all next time. Bye, friends.